everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Little Mode and today on Hot Little Mode we are going to be doing another closet tour reaction video. Yay! I really like doing these, they're very interesting, I like getting an inside look into the closets of some very, you know, notable people with a lot of cash to burn on luxury items, whether it be clothing, bags, shoes, jewelry, sunglasses. It's, it's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in these closets oftentimes, and today we're going to be reacting to Jamie Chua's closet. Now, if you guys do not know Jamie Chua, she is a Singaporean socialite and has been in the news since around the early 2010s, mostly for a, a divorce from her ex-husband that sort of was very, very interesting upon my reading. But in more recent news, she's become quite a leader in the world of social media. She is somebody to follow if you enjoy fashion and luxury items and if you have a Birkin, Kelly, or Hermes fetish. That's some real luxury porn right there. But Jamie also has sort of shown the world a bit of her closet tours, I believe earliest in 2016, and people sort of were incensed by it. People were in love, they wanted to see more. And I think sort of Jamie has now adapted her brand to be a bit more social media friendly as well. And so in 2019, she did a closet tour of my preview, it says it's a very crazy ass looking closet. So I'm excited to actually get into it, react to it, talk about it, and see what what is going on there. All right, so you guys have been requesting for me to talk about Jamie for the longest time now. It's probably one of the oldest closet tour reaction requests that I have had, and finally we're doing it. So let's get into the Wardrobe Plus Room Tour 2019 by Jamie Chua. So today is the day. I'm so excited that about this. We are going to tour JC's room. Me. Okay, first thing, love that she's JC. That's cuties. Also, is she wearing Dior? Cause like, from my understanding of this closet, she's she's not really like shopping at Zara or H&M. And something about this frilled tulle skirt is giving me very Dior and the bodysuit sort of style up top is very Maria Grazia. Let's see, what, let's see what they say. Oh my God. Okay, this is like pretty. I've literally never seen so many Birkins in my entire life. I mean, like, I've never really seen a lot of Birkins in real life, but from the closet tours, like, this is a lot. And, like, then there's a little Chanel bag, like, I'm kind of excited. Okay, here she's wearing a Louis Vuitton and Grace Coddington collaboration monogram pajama set, and, like, this is just the intro, so I feel like fashion-wise, we might actually get something that's a little bit interesting, possibly. The gold motorcycle jacket. We can, oh, a Chanel little, you know, rocket bag, naughty air. Yeah, many of you have seen my previous wardrobe tour that has got 5 million views. Me! Okay, she's really cute. I like her already. I think in 2016, Insider did a sort of like short clip of her closet tour, and that's sort of what really popped off and was like, oh my god, she's a luxury queen, socialite icon star. So it's actually very interesting that this video is much longer. It's much more detailed from my understanding because when you guys recommended me to talk about that previous video, I was like, it's too short and there's not really like a lot of detail about the actual pieces in there. So I'd rather wait till there was something substantial. Today, we are going to do a room tour and an updated version of, of course, the wardrobe tour that everybody loves. <laughs> she knows it. She knows everybody's obsessed with her of the most highly requested videos in my comments. Cheers to that one, JC. Okay, look at these pictures of her. I wish I liked myself enough to have all these photos of me. This has to be a Dior outfit because look, I can see the little Dior panty and there's a bow. There's a bow on that skirt. That's how you know Maria Grazia is in the building. I call Chanel. 
Oh, we haven't even gotten into the closet closet. We're at like pre-closet stages and I'm seeing the little luggage bag from the spring 2016 collection, which was the airport collection. I'm seeing a little pearl bag in there, which honestly is like a smart little reference to Chanel. I mean, costume jewelry and pearls are very much so a part of the brand and part of like Coco Chanel's personal wardrobe when she was still alive. I'm seeing this Rofsky crystal Lego bag in there. I'm seeing a little, I guess it's a Menardier bag that looks like one of the makeup palettes that Chanel does, or it looks like the packaging. I don't know if that's actually a bag, but I'm just assuming as much. I'm seeing two different perfume bags. Emily in Paris could have borrowed some of those. There's the Lifesaver bag from, I believe, like Resort 2019, where there was the big ship. Oh, I'm seeing a bag with a five on it, probably in reference to Chanel number five. I'm seeing just some normal Chanel quilted bags. There's a substantial amount of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff I've actually never even seen before, like something at the top of this thing looks like a lock kind of bag and I don't know what that is it's very interesting I like the little cage one with like the big pearls on it and when I was trying to look that one up I couldn't find it so I'm very interested and if this is just like a part this of the Chanel collection most oh of mine. I'm excited see I'm excited and here we are so I'm seeing at the top some sort of Murakami Louis Vuitton bag uh, handbag purse situation. It has one of Takashi Murakami's iconic characters. I don't know the names. I know this isn't like Mr. Dob, or maybe it is Mr. Dob. I don't know. But at the top, you can see it sort of screen printed on there. There's a Chanel number no. five bag, which is from my favorite collection in the entire world, fall 2014. The grocery store collection, fully iconic. If Jamie has any of the bags from that collection, specifically the ones that look like a Chanel bag wrapped in like a meat, package or the shopping basket, I'm gonna like shit a brick on camera. So prepare yourselves for that. Oh, also the Lot de Coco. You can see that if you zoom in really close, which is also from fall 2014, I believe. Now bags and some other brands of handbags as well, but mostly Chanel. <laughs> Me. Wish that was... Shut the f*** up! Uh, excuse me, Chanel! just actually have a little thing flip up and she put her fingerprint on her closet. Jeffree Star wishes he was this bitch. Okay, that shit just flipped up and then she put her whole ass finger on it and there's like glowing stuff, which means that is actually like fingerprint it, that is iconic. I don't think Cardi Evangelista had that. I think she had like the little pressy one. I'm not trying to compare anybody. Jeffree Star was like, I have a retina scan. And it was like, no bitch, you just have a fucking vault door. Jamie Chua, in my opinion, as of right now is clearly winning the closet tour experience because I've never seen somebody actually have like a fingerprint scanner as a way to open their door. I don't think people have that for their houses, let alone their closets. So this is iconic. This is what everybody has been waiting for. Welcome to JC's closet. I'm still really not over the scanning thing, but we're seeing some Dior tote book bags. We're seeing a Dior striped t-shirt. Um, I think it's actually the why are there no great female artists tee. I mean, listen, if anybody has $900 to spend on slogan tees, I'm assuming it's Miss JC. She's living her best life. So many Birkins and I'm presuming Kelly's and like I can see the reflection of what look like exotic skin bags, which probably cost $20,000, $30,000. That's not including the regular Birkins and Kelly's that we're seeing about men dresses, Gucci, Valentino studs. <laughs> okay, this is like real deal. This is like, this is there are multiple Dior t-shirts. She has the Maria Grazia We Should All Be Feminist tee, which is like probably one of the most memed runway images in the entire world. You have $895 to spend on a t-shirt. I, I guess. And it seems like she's very into Dior. I mean, between this dress, having the two t-shirts, having the tote, book bags, like there's a lot going on. I mean, also we have, you know, let's just do a run through of this experience. You have two different sizes of the Carlito Fendi fur bag charms, which like kind of iconic, kind of obsessed. Like 16 year old me is literally like having a panic attack, dying. There's a Louis Vuitton sort of egg bag, which I believe was started by Nicolas Jesquier. There's a bunch of what look like Louis Vuitton QB sort of bags. There's like Himalayan, Birkins over there and I'm seeing more than one which there's a lot of money some wicker bags just like a ridiculous amount 
of Birkins. There's a lot going on here and I'm jealous. Watches that I display. Okay, we love a watch. Handbags, little handbags. Okay, so like again, close up, we're seeing the Chanel Rocket Minaudiere bag, which like again, if you guys do not know, the Minaudieres go for around ten thousand dollars, and a lot of the times they're like very sort of beloved by people, and people collect them from the different collections. You know, there's Hermes bags that aren't Kelly's or Birkins. I don't know the names of those because I'm not really an Hermes girl, so apologies to the Hermes bitches. But I feel like you already know at this point that I'm not a Birkin bitch like that. I'm seeing like crocodile purses and blue and pink and green, a boat chapeau bag. I love tiny handbags because they're okay, so they're also cute. like little vernis, like cube Louis Vuitton bags. You can see it on the bottom down there and one in epi leather, which seems like it's sort of like a Virgil abloh -y, the different colors sort of style. I'm very interested. And um, I love using them for flat lace. <laughs> Me, okay, so casual. A white range of MS evening bags. These are the cuts. Kelly okay, so she doesn't just have like Kelly bag bags. She has like Kelly wallets, Kelly mini bags. Like she, uh, this is a lot. Like this is this is a moment. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. My hat accessories are here and more handbags, Birkin 35s. Oh my god! I've got this is making me nervous. White array of rainbow colors. You can see that. Most of them are bright colors because I love bright colors okay. and I also love neutral colors and to me the Himalayan bags the most coveted okay. I thought she had the two. She has three. Now these bags, the Himalayans, are like made from one or two sort of uh, crocodile pelts, which Hermes, if you guys do not know, actually like farms their own crocodiles. So, like there are specific crocodiles that Hermes uses to make their luxury exotic bags. Uh, they go for like $500,000. I think one went for auction at like $500,000 or something like that. I, I said in a past video that they were like $30,000, like I'm a liar. Um, They're as much as some houses. So the more you know. The Himalayan handbag are some of my prized Man. possessions which I will keep them for life. Right here we have Papa Himalayan. Oh my god, she gave them names. Oh my god. Diamonds on her and baby Himalayan. I think I need one more because there's a daughter and a son. There is some context to what she's saying about the mama and the daddy and the baby Birkin thing and wanting another one. I believe that Jamie has two children, a boy and a girl. So I'm presuming maybe that's sort of why she wants to have a collection of four to represent her family, I'm guessing, which like cute, sort of nice, interesting. I mean, if I, I guess if you got it, spend it, I don't know. A complete family. I much like to collect things of value rather than something very seasonal. That's why well, you can see those that Chanel bags say something bags different. Um, because they hold their investment value. And this collection. Can I just say, like, listen, I get it every single time you have somebody with a Birkin bag, they're like, they hold their value. And I get it, but like, I don't know, like buy a house, like, buy stocks. I don't know. I, I just don't think like a handbag is necessarily like, oh my God, my biggest investment in my portfolio, 75 Birkins. Like, I just don't get it. But if people genuinely feel that they can resell these things for more and more money, I guess. But also then when I look at how many Birkin bags are here, I wonder if like the exclusivity of the Birkin is not what people think, but also at the same time there is a conversation sort of going on now about whether or not like the value of the Birkin is going down. But like if you're spending 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars on a bag, I don't know if necessarily the value of it is gonna go down, but the more and more they make them, maybe the less and less they'll be valued. I don't really know, but it's an interesting thing to know is that a lot of people that buy Birkins and Kelly's really believe that they very much so are investment pieces. Almost 20 years, I started collecting handbags as a young girl and I was uh, very much into Chanel and then I moved on to various other brands and finally I stopped at MS. So each of these handbags have got a story and I will tell them on YouTube slowly. So do stay tuned. She said, hit the subscribe button if you want to know about them. Little ones are my ultimate favorites. I love small handbags and especially love 
the Birkin 25s, which are over there, and the Kelly 20s and the Kelly 25s. I don't use much of the Birkin 35 these days as they got a little bit heavy for me, but I still like to keep them as part of my collection. So that's the other really interesting thing. If I ever had the money to buy a Birkin, I would wear the shit out of that thing. Like it would go everywhere with me. I wouldn't care if it was heavy or light or tall or short or young or old or whatever. I'd use it till it was falling apart, which Maybe that's why I wouldn't be a good Hermes investor, but it's just very interesting that people really do have like preferences for their handbags. Like I understand having preferences for bags. I'm a tote kind of bitch. I get my free Rick Owens tote when I buy a pair of shoes and I use it till it falls apart. So like I get that, but also I just would never imagine that people say, oh, the 35 size is too big for me, but the 20 is perfect and the 25 is kind of a little bit too much, but you know what, I wear it out sometimes on occasion. Like, that's a process. Like, that's a whole lifestyle I don't think I'm ever gonna know, but it's interesting to see that that is a part of the luxury lifestyle. So, this um, Himalayan diamond handbag has got Jesus. all the hype these years and they stopped making them with diamonds, so they are very rare. Okay. So this handbag Does it is actually have diamonds in it? Because they have got diamonds encrusted all over the hardware. And let's take a look at how many diamonds are in there. <laughs> right now, I'm going to open up the diamond Himalayan Birkin. And this handbag has been on auction for Christie's and sold for 500,000. Okay, so we're on the same page. We understand. In 2000 and shit mm -hmm. and i have taken her oh. out less than 10 times that's the other thing is i guess if you buy it as an investment you don't really take it out much because you don't want it to lose value in that regard i just don't think i've ever seen a himalayan birkin like up close and personal like this where somebody's like sitting down and talking about it so this yes, actually is kind of an so interesting far, process been walking around with a diamond handbag so let's see what we have in here i don't like so that this is a society that comes with every exotic skin handbag. So I'm gonna be honest, as I just said, I'm not really a big fan of Birkins. I don't really find them interesting looking. I do find that like the hype around them is like a hype. Like I get it, it's expensive, it's handmade, it's made in France, yada, yada, yada. Hermes, expensive, great. But I don't really find that there is such an interest to them. I would say maybe like the fact that Martin Margiela when he was the creative director of Hermes and he was maybe making Birkins. I'm not really sure if he ever did that, but if he would, then I would find some sort of value to it because there's an artistic sort of aspect. While yes, there is very much so a craft aspect to how the Birkins are made. Oftentimes I personally find that the artistic side of it isn't really as fulfilling as I would like it to be. Whereas, you know, when you have Louis Vuitton, there's sort of every season something a little bit crazy, something a little bit out there, like like Nicolas Jesquier or Marc Jacobs or Virgil Abloh or Kim Jones all sort of were taking on these iconic accessories and recreating them in their image. The same for Karl Lagerfeld when he was doing Chanel and Virginie Viard also a little bit too. Maria Grazia Curie at Dior sort of actually I have to say is very very smart in the way that she's taken the Dior accessories and made them much more about use and utility which is very in line with the brand aesthetic and strategy that she has developed at Dior. So like I find that very interesting. I don't ever find that Hermes takes a designer's input or like an artistic input into the handbags and so they just feel very bag. Not, you know, referencing an artistic moment or referencing a sort of theme and style and while some people might find that trendy, I find that very interesting to reinterpret classics like that in a certain way. So that's why I really am not the biggest fan of the Birkins and the Kellys and all that sort of stuff in case anybody was wondering. This is where they kept the precious lock, which is oh. this one, with the diamonds, comes like this. It's a certificate of authenticity. It says over here that there's a total carriage of 8.2 carats of diamonds. Jesus. 18 carat gold. You can see how precious this is. Yeah, so this is there's a reason why it's $500,000. It was back in December 2008, not 2009. So, so today, so she's I, it has become a piece of art. She's like going into middle school. She's like a sixth grader. Good for her. Right here, I have got 
many hat boxes because I collect hats as well. Oh, we all I want to see the hats. These boxes right here, these are my Dior <gasps> totes, which I have been using them for travel. They store a lot and I could like put. Okay, so I actually like the fact that we're bringing in this aspect, whereas for me, Hermes and the Birkins and all that shit doesn't really interest me. I do find that when designers reinterpret sort of accessories that make sense and are in line with their aesthetics, it's really cool. And I think Maria Grazia, while I'm not the biggest fan, more and more, I sort of have warmed up to her a little bit. There is something about this book tote that feels very in line with the branding of what she's done. Her clothing, her Dior, is all about sort of making things wearable. And there's a reason that for one of the first times in a long time, Dior is selling a lot of clothes and they're making a lot of money off of the clothes. And that's probably why Maria Grazia is not gonna go anywhere. We saw it with Mark Bowen, who was the third creative director at Dior. We did a whole video about him. If you wanna know more about Mark, but he was there for 30 years. And it's because he made clothes that people wanted to actually buy. And Maria Grazia does that a lot. So I'm not saying she's gonna be there for 30 years, but prepare yourselves. And this is a great example of Maria Grazia's work of not a shitty little, you know, handbag that nobody can put anything into or a little tiny, you know, bag that costs $10,000 that you can fit a credit card and a Tic Tac in. This is a bag that you can put your books and your bags and your passports and your wallet and your sunglasses and your keys and your children and your dogs and your, I don't even know, an airplane, you can fit it all in there. And that's sort of what, people are looking for today is they want to buy something that is useful and utilitarian and they can actually carry around and I actually don't mind the embroidered aspects of these. I mean, it's probably appropriating some sort of culture because that's very Maria Grazia, but I do think the fact that you can get it embroidered with your name and it has the Christian Dior on it, like I get the draw of a bag like this. And it's very interesting that not only is JC out here buying her Birkins and her Kellys, she's also investing in things that are useful and more utilitarian. Many, many things, even a change of clothes, my shoes and Three cameras. Oh, three. I usually travel with. So one for vlogging, one for full length, and one for portraits. I don't even have three cameras. Also, I guess my airplane uh, analogy wasn't necessarily that far off. If you can fit all of that shit in there. Here you can see that I oh my God. keep my handbags in this manner because I don't like to suffocate them in boxes. I feel that the beauty should be displayed. Like that. Interesting. I guess also I have a question. I do find the idea of conservation in textiles and fashion very, very interesting. You know, how garments, accessories, hats, all of these things are stored. And I wonder if being in a big room like this where the air can touch it and these bags are, you know, sometimes 10, 20 years old, how does it affect the actual longevity of the item compared to being in a box? Like there are certain garments that should be in boxes. I don't know if there are certain accessories that should be in boxes, but probably there are certain accessories that should stay in boxes to keep the value. So it just would be interesting to see, A, if this closet has its own air conditioning and like temperature thermometer sort of situation, because that helps keep clothing, you know, long lasting and accessories I'm sure too, but it just would be interesting to see the deterioration of garments and accessories in a closet like this. Wardrobes and I Oh, she's cute. I like that dress. Wardrobes with these she's, hangers. She's very Chloe, Natasha Ramsey Levi. The display, just like this gown right That I'm not as interested in. The Gucci next door, I like her. It's just hanging here. So I categorize my wardrobe in a very organized manner so okay, that it's it. easy for me to find what I need. So let's have a look at how I oh, categorize. Oh shit, these glasses are fire. My Those, oh my god, that's insane. So these are my yeah. jeans. That is insane. <laughs> Wow, I didn't, okay, wow. She just pulled her whole closet out. So, Got it. Leather pants, t-shirts. Me, love a leather pants. Pant. Everything is very important easy. to a wardrobe is your leather pants section. So that it's easy that when I want to search for something, I could actually just look for them like that. It's like a filing system. My <laughs> jeans as well, and Jeez. going according to 
I bet you she cleaned before this. I do on my sunglasses. Nobody's closet looks this good all the time. These are my belts. It's easy. Okay, she has a lot of belts too. A lot of sunnies. Organized in their compartments. Damn. Have my Chanel collection. Oh, there's a Chanel collection. Okay, let's see that. Chanel jackets. Okay, pull one out. Pull one out. Oh. You know what? You can actually see. I can see at the beginning of the bottom row that Balmain sort of intricacy of the demi couture aspect which is Olivier Roussang making clothing that is very very expensive because it has a lot of handiwork that goes into it but it's not necessarily considered haute couture and then at the back I can see a print like a floral print that is very reminiscent of Alessandra Michele's Gucci as well so it's actually very interesting the way that she keeps things but the Chanel has its own whole rack I'm presuming oh uh, SLP etc that I keep here SLP um, Saint Laurent Paris she loves space for Chanel which means I may need to stop by or I have to take one out to put a new I was gonna say, it doesn't seem like Jamie is wanting to stop buying. I love Chanel jackets because I think they are timeless and classic. I tend to be a little bit more careful when I'm buying Chanel jackets because some most most of them make me look like I'm 60. <laughs> so if I'm 70 and I wear them, I would technically look 60. But now that I am 45, I do not want to look 60. Why spend money? <laughs> Okay, what an explanation. Good to know. I actually have heard this about Chanel is that I think it's very hard for a younger customer to sort of get into the tweed. I think when Karl Lagerfeld was doing his like early 90s sort of styles where it was very like, you know, short, cropped, sort of colorful, punchy, it was probably a little bit more desirable to a younger customer. But I also think, you know, she's right. Like if a woman does not want to look older than she is, why would you purchase a garment that might make you look that way or you might be interpreted in that manner because listen people can say whatever they want about clothing because no matter what people say it's usually the first thing people see besides your face and your hair and it definitely does have an interest and a way that people interpret you so it's actually very interesting that she's like oh listen i buy the jackets i just don't like wearing them and it doesn't make you look any younger better off flatter you my favorites are soft pinks as you can see yeah Oh, and yeah. I love the Lesage by Chanel. Oh, I like JC. I like JC for a lot of reasons. The door, the first part, her spending habits, the second part, and the fact that she just brought up Lesage is my ding ding ding. I just need one more for a grand slam and then I'm good. I can go home happy. Lesage, if you guys do not know, is an iconic French embroidery atelier that was utilized by a lot of brands, whether it was Dior or Balmain or Chanel. Lesage sort of is very iconic in terms of embroidery. I'm pretty positive you can actually go to Lesage and do like a class in embroidery so you can learn how to do Lesage embroidery. But I like the fact that Jamie knows about the clothing. I think a lot of people just would say, I bought a Chanel jacket. And some people might not know what the f a Lesage is. And unfortunately, I think that's kind of sad. Like if you really are buying clothing because you like it, you enjoy it, you should know about it and the reason why it's important and the craftsmanship that really goes into these pieces. So I actually really respect that. And I love that she just said Lesage because I'm a La Stan of Lesage. My favorite one is in front. It has got pearls. And it's a leather mm -hmm. jacket. Very Chanel. I really, really love this jacket. Also, I wonder if there's any haute couture in here. I don't know if she's an haute couture customer. I'm not really sure. I mean, she probably is. I'm sure she doesn't buy like, oh my God, 20 racks full of haute couture because who could afford that? But it would be very, very interesting to see if Jamie was an haute couture kind of gal. This is Ooh. a jacket that I've had for 28 years. <gasps> it's a Johnny Versace Ooh. runway. I take her out once a year and wear it and get tons of compliments. Okay, so if you guys do not know, Jenny Versace was an icon, a star, a legend. Have so much respect for the man and the fact that Jamie, 20 years ago, recognized that. We stand. I'm obsessed. I want to see more of this jacket. This is a very, very special piece from the runway. It has bows. That's very her, it seems. Please embellish with crystals yeah. and beautiful and this is what i ask for when you do a closet tour this is the way to do it you have pieces that you love that you're obsessed with that you've worn for years and years and years and years and years show it to me like the craftsmanship of 
the embroidery of this collar, which, you know, I'm, it's not my favorite jacket in the entire world, but being able to see the gold thread and the piping of the jacket, it's beautiful, it's stunning. Like, this is a piece that, you know, could go down in history. It's Gianni Versace. I haven't found the runway collection that it is from, but I also didn't really look that hard, to be honest. But I respect it, I'm obsessed with it, and JC has had taste for years, obviously. Go for it. a really kind of a renaissance yeah design. the gold thread is brazy and next is my leather jacket Ooh. collection i have got many leather jackets as well as bomber jackets okay i don't really get the leather jacket thing of the moment this dior bar jacket okay let's see it let's see the dior bar for a fashion house and i have them in two colors black and in white. I chose the bar jacket in a wider neckline because it flatters me more. Okay, the other thing is, again, the way that she's speaking about the clothing, like she understands how to dress herself. She understands that I'm not just buying shit to button it up and it doesn't look flattering on me. And I think that's actually really important to hear. Again, I, a lot of the times when these people do these closet tours, they just say, look at my Birkins, look at this, you know, Gucci monogram suit. It's like, this woman's actually talking about clothing in a way that she respects clothing. She understands how to dress herself. She understands what she likes. She understands what she doesn't like. There's like something actually interesting going on here and the fact that she's talking about the Dior bar jacket, she knows what it is, she understands the fact that it's iconic and part of the brand. I'm into that, I like that, I respect that. You know, you could have an interesting conversation with her, I'm sure, about, you know, the brands that she buys and why she does it, and it's not just throwing money at shit with monograms and labels just because. Also, I wonder if Christian Dior ever would open a bar called The Bar Jacket. If they start doing that, I would like my check, please. Thank you. Then one that is very closed up on the neckline. I am a big fan of the Tula skirt yeah. like this. It's from Dior Knew as it. well. Knew I it. Them in different She's kind of selling me on it a little bit. Like I don't like, like these dresses, like but like, skirt. it's interesting to see somebody casually wear it around. Oh, I hate the bows. Yeah, we're gonna have to disagree on the bows, but I'm kind of interested in it. It just seems so casual. She's like, listen, let me put on my Dior. Dresses from them, and if I like the design, I tend to buy in several colors. That is very accessible. I understand that. I do love buying multiple colors of a thing that fits me very well. Dress that I adore as well, and this shape is a very classic shape and very, very flattering to the body. I became a Dior girl recently. Oh. I, I just love everything Dior. So Maybe she's a Maria Grazia kind of woman. And the thing is, I think, you know, the previous designers, you had Raph Simmons, you had John Galliano, Gianfranco Ferre, like, I don't know if they necessarily understood the concept of like making clothing for people that they would actually wear. Whereas, you know, Maria Grazia, Christian Dior himself ish, and Mark Bowen all sort of got the gist of make clothing that people will actually fucking wear. And if that's the reason that she only recently started buying Dior, I get the strategy of making clothing that makes sense for somebody to actually be able to wear, purchase, and not, you know, say, I can only wear this once, I can only take an Instagram picture once. Like, this is a very casual sort of look, I think, for JC over here. So, I'm kind of into it. These are my evening dresses, all long Look dresses. at that Gucci. I keep them here because it a Gucci hooch, so that's me. I just some of them and I don't have enough space for everything, so I just put the best ones out here. Okay. And here are my short evening dresses. Okay, pull some out. Come on, let's see. Let's see. Short evening cocktail dresses right here. So as you can okay, see, I put all my favorites are um, that a few. Looks like a piece of art. I don't think it's attractive, the dress. The embroidery and whatever is just a bit gauche, a bit gaudy for me, but I'm sure there's a lot of time spent on this dress. So the craftsmanship, respect it. The artistry, meh. Right in front, so they all look like little frames and I changed them. That's to smart. I like that. my photo ops. <laughs> I, I do kind of like her. I'm very interested. Another one of these Belmonts. Okay. I love to collect Belmonts 
in black in the evening wear okay. because um, I think they are really, really, really classic and timeless. Okay, I want to see Miss JC in one of the Bowman leather corset bodice pieces. That would be really hot. I kind of need to see that. I want to see that. Like, let's get that on the books. So Olivier, JC, do a collaboration. Jamie, make it a vlog. I want to see it happen. So this looks like it's a, a separate necklace, but it's actually also attached. Oh, cute. To okay. This Very Audrey Hepburn-y. Tiffany's. And right here, we have more short dresses, shirts. Okay. And more tops and skirts. Okay. Embroidery has no problem. Mm -hmm. Might scratch the glass. Dresses, casual styles, mm -hmm. as well she as some some winter wear. What the furs here? The fur. And on the last but not least, okay. more of my winter wear right here. I respect the idea that there's a lot of winter wear going on. Jackets, sweaters. My stockings. Oh my god. Stockings right she must here. go to Wolford a lot. Oh, categorize. My gloves <sighs> and my socks Jesus. are all here. My winter shawls. Now, this is my, my shoe. Oh my collection. god. There's a second um, part. Oh my god. Did anyone see the shoes? Oh my god. Okay. Um, collection of my heels, shoes, sneakers, boots. I love shoes and if Yeah, shoes I could tell you head love head shoes. Color, only if they're comfortable. I don't really wear very There's a lot of stilettos, so these, but I still like to keep them as they are pretty to look at. I just keep them for maybe when I need to take a photo oh with a fancy heel, I will just bring them along with me. Not that I'm ever going to walk a great distance in them because I was so die. These are my favorite Cinderella shoes. Uh -huh, they are Lobotons. Not obsessed, so but I'm not a big lube girl. So you can see that I'm like, I like lube, kind of not Louboutins. Oh I no, get those out of here, I we're done. Oh no, I that too, take that. Mind. The Louis Vuitton Arclight sneakers, they can stay. I like them, I'm happy with them. Because to my collection, because they are just so comfortable, I'm also a big fan of ankle boots. Oh, she looks bit more in Valentino. So this is where I take a rest or where I sit down and get some inspiration about what I'm going to wear the very next day. So I have miniature perfumes right here because oh they're so, so cute. Also, is that a Chanel bag with a little camera? Accessories. Right here, okay. some really, really fancy earrings. See? Ooh. All right. Fancy. Right here, I have an even bigger pair. Problem is, when I walk, it drops because they're simply too heavy. <laughs> so right here is my accessories okay. and jewelry corner. I Jesus. like to collect Louis Vuitton little boxes. Those are cute. Little I know somebody that stores pieces. paraphernalia in yes. those. Cute for flat lay and for display, so I could put some of my watches, jewelry, accessories inside and move them around. So these are my jewelry collection. I've got Cartier, Van Cleef, Jesus. just some of my favorite brands. I mean, like this probably is more expensive than all the fucking shoes put together. Space, but um, it's nice to have them around when Jeez. you need them. Okay, I know nothing about jewelry, so sorry about that. Love this Not a jewelry video. vlogger. So don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, and love this. Show me some love. Because okay, I'm gonna show Jamie some love because I'm kind of obsessed with her. Go subscribe to her channel. I'm sure that she puts out amazing content about fashion, luxury, lifestyle. If that's what you're into, we'll put the link in the description. But I'm obsessed. To be honest, like I was not expecting that whole experience, but I actually think it was a really cool way of showcasing the closet. We've seen people that are really heavy on certain sort of items, but I think Jamie sort of covered a whole lot of pieces, whether it was bags, shoes, there was a lot of clothing being shown as well, which I think actually is very nice, very well-rounded, like to see it. I have to say, I actually was very impressed with this closet. I was really intrigued by it. I think it was definitely worth reacting to. I don't think I will ever be as amazed about a finger scanner the way that I've ever been now. Like, pfft. iconic, legendary, star. I think that Jamie knows her shit. She knows what she likes. She buys what she likes. She knows how to talk about it, and she knows when to say, look, this is me, this is how I am, 
Go f*** yourself. So that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And any pieces that you were so obsessed with, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. So I will see you guys in the next one. And T-T-Y-L.